Hey everybody, this is Peter from Spinarack, and today I want to do a video on the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Not necessarily a full-on review, but just talk about what they were kind of doing because we had the early period of Marvel, which was kind of the you know the um the feet of clay period where the character would have feet of clay and then they would kind of come out of it. So you had Iron Man, you had Thor, less so with Thor, uh, Hulk and Captain America, but you had, and then you had the bickering of the Avengers movie of bringing them together and then not kind of meshing and then getting to that point. Then more recently, you had the phase four period because all the other phases kind of come, come out of it. The phase four period is kind of the um, social justice period. What else can we call it, right? where they kind of lost their way, right? They would just kind of do heroes and heroes that couldn't really have failings. So they all kind of had a Captain America thing where you had characters doing the right thing for the right reason, even the kids, right? And if they would do the right thing, they would do the, do the wrong thing, they'd do it for the right reasons, so trying to do something positive, right? So come in here, I don't know if this is five, I guess this is five. We already had um, Ant-Man, Quantumania, and um, that one was kind of a miss. I think people kind of go to the miss with um, the Jonathan Majors, but I don't have any issue with his uh, performance. Um, but we had some things here where we find out more in the Guardians. I'm going to get a picture up. So with the Guardians, they kind of, this is, this is, I've been kind of, because I know James Gunn didn't put together these characters. I've been kind of wondering why this was put together like so, because obviously it's a good name. Well, they took a portion of the characters who were part of um, Warlock in the Infinity Watch, which would be Gamora and um, I think Drax was in it. But they had Pip, so you switch Pip for um, Rocket Raccoon, and then you have something else, right? So I kind of always was puzzled by this, but it seemed like they gave us like a, what is it, a... Um, What's that thing called? They gave us the Micronauts type of characters slash the Omega Men from DC and the Guardians. So, um, I think in some of our other videos also dealt with it. In my mind, this, because they were bringing in Warlock, and Warlock is kind of a Christ-like figure. I think maybe James Gunn wanted to do the story that I reviewed where the Hulk meets um, Adam Warlock in Counter Earth. In Counter Hulk is Earth, um, Warlock is a freedom fighter on Counter Earth. And that would be something where Warlock would have an arc. If they're trying to save it, it, he loses it or dies there. And, you know, through Cocoon comes back to life. I don't know. But um, it seems like that is set up to do that since Counter Earth is, Earth is in peril and needs a hero, right? Instead of someone who's kind of like a Superman character for them to go back and forth with. But at the same time, I noticed the characters are very tortured souls, right? And when I watched um, the first movie, it was kind of the happy-go-lucky crew Right, the second movie utilized a little more of a tortured soul in having, um, I mean, it's kind of kiddish to have um, him playing ball with um, ego, but um, at the same time, um, that's kind of took from a John Byrne story, which was ego came to earth and almost destroyed it. The Fantastic Four had to send it off, and they basically, that was a portion of the plot. So I was kind of saying, is this, is James Gunn a comic fan? 
and he goes through the comics and finds a lot of these things and puts them in there. Will that be his thing when he goes to um, DC and does Superman? So with that said, going into this, I really was surprised that this was kind of a tortured soul type of movie, right? And let me just go to the trailer. Sex, but see, look at that. We have, we have, um, well, he's drunk here, right? We have the Guardians of the Galaxy, right? We know that Gamora isn't there, so it's kind of the team is kind of splintered. Um, we have Nebula kind of being the leader here. And to me, it kind of started giving off some Alpha Flight vibes, right? Now, Alpha Flight was kind of a series that was, um, that was like a day two um, superhero team where Byrne wasn't necessarily interested in doing the Alpha Flight series. And at the same time when he did them, he had these characters that were sort of basic. So he kind of gave them complex origins outside of say, you know, actually even, even North Star, he has a, you know, he has a, he's in, his character is out. He's a gay character, he's out, but Marvel couldn't really say it. So he's kind of out, but he couldn't actually say it, right? So let's look at this trail, right? We got drunk him. We got couple character in Mantis. It ha I mean, it has a bunch, it does not just that. It, this, this one kind of has a, not just Alpha Flight, but a, um, what is it? A um, Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz sort of feel where all these characters are missing something. They all have some sort of hole that they try to like. Um, what was it? Star, was it uh, Star Hawk is struggling being the new Star Hawk. I already said that um, um, Nebula's compensating. Um, Star Lord struggling with Gamora being lost to him. Obviously, Drax is his um, um, daughter, but that's the other thing. He didn't really have a daughter. He, I mean, he had a daughter, but she was Moon Dragon. She was a very powerful character. She wasn't a daughter who died. And Mantis is kind of struggling with her identity. So we had the well adjusted. Um, Rocket Raccoon or Rocket. And that's where I started saying, wait a second, this seems like the origin that Byrne was doing for, for Wolverine. Now the origin is not the same, but that goes in to say, is James Gunn a comic fan? Because the original origin of Wolverine that Chris Claremont planned was that Wolverine was gonna be an actual Wolverine and the high evolutionary was gonna take a Wolverine and transform it into a actual man. But you'd have the tendencies of a, of, a, of a Wolverine. But at the same time, that's why when the Sentinels looked at Wolverine, they couldn't tell what he was because he actually wasn't a mutant. He was something that was de-evolved, right? So that says that maybe James Gunn, or just as this Marvel separate certain So look at the trailer. I think I gave enough to start this video. I'm done running. Listen to the music. The only thing with this is the villain is just straightforward. It's like Marvel finally did a villain that's just a bad guy. Now the high evolutionary isn't just a bad guy. In some stories, he can be the bad guy. Some stories, he can be kind of the, you know, the enlightened one, you know? This one is just straightforward villain, right? He's just a bad guy, and he's not even that smart. He needs Rocket, who's a genetically altered raccoon, but somehow he's the one who's able to um, do the evolution process that high evolution. So it's kind of, he starts out the kind of the low evolutionary. So he's, I don't know, if you look at the master, maybe you would think the master was like that. The master is a little more pompous. 
So I can't say it's all together an alpha flight gun, but let's keep going. Society. I'll tell you something. So he's drunk here, so he'll give you the torture. The galaxy still needs its guardians. Are you ready? For one last drive? Hmm. See all the sad So the thing when this was the joyous, this was the fun sort of series. See, it's all dark type of stuff and heavy type of thing. You see this is kind of a fun scene, but he's just um I don't know. I think they just kinda had that and they needed to kind of use it for the next movie. Because they were going to be sending off um, Warlock, but it's not really any Warlock that we've seen, right? But so this is, for me, kind of going into the Marvel tragic period, though, the Greek tragedies of the 80s, of the death of Phoenix, um, the death of Guardian, um, you know, um, Yellow Jacket and um, Moss breaking up, all this heavy stuff that goes through. So I'm losing the baby, um, Thor being mutilated by Hela, all these things that were very heavy to the fans, you know, looking at it. And Gamora is like the, the girl that he can't connect with anymore. And she's not going to be brought back in such a way where everything is cool, right? But you see this thing is getting to this heavy thing, which they didn't have. It has some of the creatures from the Rock and Rock Poon mystery um, miniseries, but at the same time, the Rock and Rock Poon miniseries a little more fun type of thing. See how heavy this is? I think he's talking about, well, there's some other characters in there. So. Alright, so there we did. We did that. Let's get out of this for a minute. Stop. Alright, so let's, to give you what I've been trying to say for this all this time, I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, excuse me, sorry about that. Oh, that was a bad one, right? I'm trying to see if this will work. So um, now that I'm here, I'm going to do this pretty quickly, right? Because the premise of the movie is that um, they send out, I think it's the High Revolutionary, send out Warlock to take out the Guardians who are in a bad space. And at the same time, as that happens, um, who is it? Rocket is critically injured. So basically, he, most of the story, he's on his back. But they get into his backstory at the same time. So while he's out, you get to see flashbacks of his history and his past. And with that said, I'm gonna go to the John Byrne Elswin um, thing, right? And we're gonna end this pretty quickly, but he did a story called What Price Yesterday, right? 
And in this story, Shaman is he has a catalog of everyone's memories on the team. So he's going to try to restore Wolverine. But the way the Shaman works, things don't always work out in the people's favor, right? So if we look at this, right? So you see Shaman over there, Wolverine and Glenn. So, right? So this is that Mount Logan. Oh, sorry, guys. That Mount Logan. And this is where Logan Wolverine got his name, right? Comes in. We have a young Wolverine who has the face of um, of um, who's a saber tooth, right? He favors saber tooth at this period. And Logan is protecting his mother. And then the saber tooth comes in. He hints, he already tells you that this is supposed to be his kid, right? But he's not appreciative of having a son, so he knocks him aside. He's gonna finish off his baby's mother, right? So in there, he finishes her off. Wolverine's upset and tosses Wolverine into the cold ice. And you see Wolverine's face, his profile. And you see Wolverine sitting on the, on the floor while this sort of seance is going on. We get to more of his history. So I'm just gonna quickly go through this because I don't know, I wanna, I wanna do uh, uh, an episode on Wolverine's origin, but because um, Captain America shows up. But um, let's put this one stands. So, right here, you see Wolverine on the floor. Here's a key part. So, this is what what um, Rocket is going through. As they go through his memories, he goes through this thing of harsh pain at the same time. So, that led me to kind of look like is James Gunn a comic fan? Right? But at the same time, this origin that we see of Rock and Raccoon is kind of similar. And if you look at Alpha Flight, like you had these characters that seemed simple, but they had all these layers to them. You know, they had all these layers. So, and I would say, I don't, it's hard to say because when I initially thought of doing this, I thought of doing, as I was saying, Thor struggling with um, losing his father and struggling with Lady Sif, who thinks she was my, when he was my control, he slapped Sif, and now he can't get her back on his side. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff during this period. Oh, Yellow Jacket, the fall of Yellow Jacket, um, Claire leaving Doctor Strange. So you had all these things that were very heavy that I don't even think comic readers today understand that they were almost topping each other. Chris, that Walter Simonson was saying, hey, what, what um, Chris Claremont has, he doesn't let the, the readers off the hook. Like, he, he has them, and they can oh, they, they always be surprised, right? So with that said, I'm going to end it here. I want to do, do something a little, but it's, I don't know if this is going to be moving on to a tragic period for Marvel, but it was that grunt-wrenching period of the 80s for me some of the best comics ever because I couldn't see what was happening next. And I didn't know if the creators were destroying the character or doing something that was be very classic that everyone would remember. So there we go. I showed you Wolverine laid out for most of the things just like Rocket. I told you the connection that Rocket had or Wolverine had to the High Evolutionary. So this connection could mean that maybe James Gunn knows some comic book logic. Maybe that'll work its way into his DC stuff. So I think that's about it. Before I look, I look very sleepy. I'll talk to you guys later. Spin rack out.